something that was always there as a protagonist in your films was the landscape and the beauty of nature. Yes. So you, you live yourself in a very beautiful surrounding. Yes. On the West Irish coast. Mm -hmm. So what role does uh, landscape and nature play? Um, it's very much um, uh, in a way our relationship to it and, and, and um, Yes, I'm living in a place that, that is right on the very, very west, westerly point of Europe, really. Um, and you're you're right out sort of in the sea and the, you know, in the, the mountains. Um, but I think on a larger scale, I'm looking at how we as humans have affected the landscape and continue to affect the landscape and that understanding that we seem to have closed our ears to that it is a balance that we are not the custodians of it that we are we are we have to wake up and work in harmony with the landscape so um there's a there's an element of um uh, uh you know the uh, climate change and my interest in that and my concern with that but also with how we as human beings have to evolve in that changing environment and um, in all these storms and in all these um um you know fires that are happening all over the world and then of course with the recent pandemic you know we have to evolve as humans and and, and understand that it's a balance it's it's um that we have to somehow get right how do you feel the climate change in west ireland is it becoming like Côte d'Azur, warm and dry <laughs> I wish. Well, you know, we, we we really we have a lot more storms, we have a lot more rain, but then we do have, you know, we do have some really amazing weather. And oddly enough, for us during our lockdown earlier this year, there was the most amazing weather um, we've seen in a long time. It was just months and months of endless sunshine. Um, so there's a sort of an element of we don't know, but there's a lot more you know, I think rain and flooding and, and storms that do damage that we would never have seen before, you know. There is a major change in your work because before in your films there was the trace or there were human traces and now there are human protagonists. Mm -hmm. Am I right? And why is it so? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think for, for many years, um, my focus was, was specifically on the environment and, and, and using the landscape, but I have not to a certain extent left that behind. I think my, my focus has moved more towards, um, towards people and towards how we are affecting it. So I've basically turned the camera, um, on people, but people still within the landscape and still pe uh, how we as humans are affecting the landscape and are affected by it as well. So, um, and I've, I've started working with choreography um, a number of years ago and I've worked again with Maria Nelson Waller on this film. So it's, it's somewhere between dance and um, physical performance, I suppose, um, yeah. What was the first work which changed? Was it Human Flock? Um, actually, bodies in water. No, it was. It was in fact. I, I think um, at, at the time, it, it really. I suppose it, it was um, Flight from the City, mm -hmm. which is the short film I did for the late um, composer Johan Johansson, and um, I think working with performers had been something that that had been sort of in the back of my mind for a very long time, but I, I didn't really know where to start, and that film gave me an opportunity or a kind of freedom. I suppose, sort of slightly away from the art world, doing something for somebody else. And it actually, the reaction to that and also the process of, of, of now working with dance and performance, it just opened up a whole new kind of um, way for me to work. And that has grown and still grows, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's still really important, even in the most recent shoot in, in, in the summer um, this year. So, yeah.
you have been working for a long time with the same cameraman mm -hmm. and experiencing with different types of camera. Mm -hmm. So to improve even the beauty of the landscapes you film, uh, you improve by infrared and warm camera. And uh, can you talk a little bit about this proceeding mm -hmm. and this collaboration? Yeah, I mean, I've been lucky enough to work with um, cinematographer Robbie Ryan for pretty much 20, more than 20 years now. And he was just fin finishing college when I started working with him. And he's always had a very experimental approach approach to filmmaking, as as do I. And um, we shot with 16 millimeter for the, the, probably the first, I suppose, um, 10 years and, and, and then I think infrared was something I used to play around with many, many years ago and, and with a film camera. And I wanted to to start um, shooting with it, but in, in um, a digital format. So um, I had the camera converted and then it became, I suppose, to a certain extent, it, it's almost like a, a, a painter's palette. You know, um, what you see through the, the lens is what you see on the screen. I mean, there's there's a certain amount of um, grading done, of course, but that is what I'm seeing. So that, that's always been very much part of my way of working um, is that what I see through the lens, it's very much um, uh, like a type of um, site Pacific kind of feeling of land art rather than than um, heavy post production. Um, so this is something that um, and also myself and Robbie working together, it's quite funny, you know, you know, it's, Robbie, Robbie tends to just um, turn up and, and, and um, we know each other so well that, you know, we discuss obviously to a certain extent what I, what I want and what I'm trying to achieve. But um, there's also a kind of just a, an unspokenness that we just have a particular way of working and, and um, I'm, I'm just incredibly grateful that he's, he'll still work with me after all these years, considering his his, um, you know, he makes uh, shoots the most some of the most amazing feature films uh, these days. So, um, but yeah, the, the 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 infrared to a certain extent is is a type of filter as well between not shooting something that looks very real. It's, it sort of creates sort of a, a, a dreamlike, otherworldly um, uh, cinematic that that I'm trying that I have been trying to achieve. So. The film we are going to show here in world premiere is uh, Heart of a Tree. Where did you shoot it and why? 
there? Well, um, the film addresses the importance of um, trees and 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 the role of trees in the oxygen supply for the planet. And by removing the trees, you threaten the very life that exists on it, including including humans. Um, so I wanted to shoot in, in a, a treeless environment, in a way, kind of fast forwarding into a future, possible future world that had no trees. So it was shot in the highlands of, of Iceland, uh, which is a, a regular place where I have visited over the, the last 20 years to shoot films and take photographs. And it was shot in a, in a, in a place that was really right where the, the tectonic plates of the North American tectonic plate and the Eurasian plate meet. And it was like a kind of a this oasis uh, to a certain extent in the middle. But again, it's already been affected by climate change because where we shot used to be a ski resort. But, but um, for most of the year now, it, it doesn't have um, snow. So, um, yeah, it was a, a, an extraordinary location and very much suited what we were trying to do. Um, myself and Maria had, the choreographer, had discussed um, how to, in a way, um, negotiate this landscape and what these characters, these performers, what was it they were doing, what was it they were having to negotiate. This general subject of uh, uh, this fourth edition of uh, Kino der Kunst is forbidden beauty. So mm -hmm. you work a lot around the notion of beauty, beauty of nature, beauty of landscape, beauty of the images, now more and more choreography. So what is beauty for you? Um, to me, it's a, it's, it's a poetic form um, um, that to a certain extent, like music can affect people in a particular way that they they may not understand, they may be emotionally moved or um, it's not a direct, it's to me, it's not a direct way of, of um, uh, I suppose, affecting the viewer. So for me, um, I've never been afraid of it, even though I, to a certain extent I know it has not been fashionable in the art world for um, many years. But at the same time, I would feel like I was being uh, dishonest not to work in a particular way that I feel somehow moves me and somehow 
I hope, will move other people. Is beauty really, maybe not forbidden, this is provocative, but not so much estimated in contemporary art? Um, yeah, it's, 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 it has sort of felt for maybe about 10 years that it's, it's almost like a bad word. Yeah, it's, it's like, um, uh, I think a lot of people can decide just immediately that they don't even want to perhaps look at a particular work if it's, if it's got an element of beauty or a very strong aesthetic. I do think that there has been a certain element of that, yeah where, you know, it might be more fashionable to make a, 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 a another uh, type of work. So, yeah, I, I do feel there's been a, a, a kind of a, a shift against that. And hopefully that will change. Yeah.